than dental trig functions, which is what, uh, what we are looking at um, today. So uh, let me continue talking about this. Last class, we had talked about uh, right triangle trigonometry. And I did this example too over here with you. Now, um, there are actually a couple of special right triangles. And I think I would be remiss if I didn't tell you what those special right triangles were. So let me do that now. So uh, hold on one sec. All right, sorry, so let's do this. So there's two special right triangles. So let's call these special right triangles. Okay, the first one looks like this. And um, let me make this a little bit bigger when I write it so you can see it. Okay, the first one looks like this. And the angles on the inside here, this is pi over six or 30 degrees. This guy right here is pi over three, which is 60 degrees. Okay, so sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a 30, 60, 90 triangle. But in this class, we wanna work with radians more. So that's why I use the pi over six and the pi over three. And the thing you got to remember is the smallest angle is the side. <clears throat> the side opposite the smallest angle should be the smallest side. So this is really going to be a one to two to rad three. So the number one is smaller than rad three. Uh, rad three is smaller than two. So those are going to be opposite the corresponding angles. Okay. This triangle is a uh, very common. That's the first special right triangle. I'm going to reduce the size of this because it's encroaching, but something like that. Okay. The second uh, famous right triangle that we work with is something that looks like this. Okay. This right triangle looks different from the previous one because two of the sides have the same length. So when two of the sides have the same length, they call that an isosceles triangle. Iso means kind of the same. Uh, so we got one to one to rad two like this. And remember, we can always find the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. So if each of these two sides are the same length, then that means the opposite angles should be the same number. And this total of the interior angles has to be 180 degrees. So this little square means we have a 90 degree angle. So 180 minus 90 is 90. And I have to divide that by two. So then these are gonna become 45 and 45. So this will be 45 degrees, which is the same thing as pi over four. And this one is the same, this is 45 degrees or pi over four. And these are two special right triangles that we use uh, often. So just have those sitting there for reference. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, okay. Yeah, you wrote pi over six. Thank you. That was uh, not a test. That was just straight up error. Thank you. Uh, so last class I had explained to you that uh, when it comes to trigonometry, people primarily use three approaches. One could argue that there's four approaches, but uh, the first approach is right triangle trigonometry and we've kind of covered that. The second approach is called the unit circle approach. And that's what we wanna look at now. So this, picture right here, I have, this is called the unit circle. And when you see the word unit, unit is 
usually kind of represents like one, like unicorn is like one horn, you know, uh, unicycle is like one wheel. So when we say we have a unit circle, what's the radius of the circle gonna be? One. One. So I can label some points here. I can label this point one, zero. I can label this point zero, one. I can label this point negative one, zero. I can label this point zero, negative one. And I know all those coordinates because those all live along the axes, right? So uh, I guess what we want to do is we want to label different angles. And the different angles that we have are going to be measured relative to the positive x-axis. So here's the positive x-axis right here. We're going to measure our angle relative to that. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the angles. Uh, I'll just write them in, I guess. Let's do the angles in a different color. Let's do the angles in blue. Blue, okay. And we're gonna write our angles in radians. So the first thing you should know is that if we're measuring the, from the positive x-axis, that could be zero radians or it could be two pi radians. So you guys hopefully know that when you go the full two pi, you end up back where you started, right? And then we're gonna fill in the rest of the angles. So uh, the way that I do it is I use fractions to fill out the rest of the angles. So the first thing is I can see, I can divide it into four pieces, right? The four pieces would be the uh, four kind of coordinate axes. So uh, two pi divided by four is pi over two. So I could say, oh, this angle here is pi over two. This angle here is two pi over twos, which is pi. And this angle here is three pi over two. Does that make sense? Okay. Then um, another way that I could do this is if I look at this length right here, instead of cutting it into quarters, this would cut it into eighths, right? So if I think what's two pi divided by eight, two pi divided by eight is pi over four. That means each of these sort of pie slices, if I were to take this and cut it into eight pie slices, each pie slice would be pi over four. So when I come and I label these angles, this would be a pi over four, right? Two pi over fours gives you pi over two. This, guy, this next one is three pi over four. Four pi over fours gives you pi. The next one is five pi over four. Six pi over fours gives you the three pi over two at the bottom. And then we're gonna have seven pi over four, so. We could label our angles that way. Does that make sense? Okay. Then the next thing we want to do is, uh, if I look at this part right here, this little pie slice right here, can you guys see that this pie slice <coughs> is one third of the pi over two? There's three of these pie slices right here. So if I took pi over two and I divided by that by three, what would I get? I get pi over six. So this is one pi over six right here, right? The next dot, the next blank dot would be two pi over sixes, but two pi over six is pi over three. Uh, then you would have this uh, pi over two. If you had pi over six to that, uh, if you add pi over six to that pi over two, you're gonna get uh, four pi over six, which is three pi over two. I'm sorry, uh, two pi over three. This is two pi over three, okay. Uh, if you added another pi over six to four pi over six, that would give you five pi over six. So this is five pi over six. So we just keep adding pi over sixes to each slice. This would be uh, six pi over six is the pi. So then you add one more pi over six, that would be seven pi over six. You get another pi over six, that would be eight pi over six. Eight divided by uh, six is four over three. So it's really four pi over three like this, 
right? You add another pi over six that gives you, um, uh, that gives you uh, nine pi over six. You add another pi over six that gives you 10 pi over six. 10 pi over six, the same thing as five pi over three. You add another pi over six to 10 pi over six that gives you 11 pi over six. So I, I did some fraction reduction as I went along. I hope that doesn't bother you. Okay. Once you've created this uh, unit circle, this has all the common angles that we're gonna work with in this class for the most part. Um, and it turns out that each of these little points that they have labeled here, these correspond with coordinates on the unit circle. And uh, we can fill out these coordinates really using our special triangle over here. Okay. So when I take this special triangle, what I want you to imagine that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide each of these numbers by two. Can you see why I would want to divide each of these numbers by two? Can anyone explain why I'm gonna do that right now? Any thought? Why would I suddenly wanna divide this everything by two? What if I told you that I wanted to match up this triangle right here? because I know that this triangle here is pi over six. This angle is pi over six. I just want to glue it there. Why would I want to divide by pi over two? Does anyone know? Is it because the max unit is one and because the side is two, you have to divide it by two? I want to rescale it, right? Yeah. Rescale it. That's exactly right. That's exactly why I want to do that. So when I rescale these, when I divide this by two, I divide this by two and I divide this by two, that makes it the unit circle. That's how we know we have the unit circle. Okay. So uh, we can label these points because when you look at this triangle, can you guys see that, uh, and I'll do maybe these points in green. Uh, the X coordinate is gonna be given by the three over two and the y coordinate is going to be given by one half. If you just imagine this triangle posted right here. Okay. So this is going to be uh, the x value is red three over two, and then this guy over here is going to be one half. Okay. If we looked at the uh, if we looked at this pi over three part right here. This pi over three part, I hope you guys could see, if I drew a triangle here, this is going to be pi over six, uh, I'm sorry, pi over three, and this is going to be the pi over six over here. So it's almost like I took this triangle and I rotated it and I fit it into this space here. So I took this triangle, I rotated it, I fit it into this space right here. And then I could read off what the X coordinate would be the X coordinate, can you guys see that's gonna be one half now? And the Y coordinate is gonna be the rad three over two. So I don't like having that triangle sit there, so I'm gonna erase it. But this point is gonna be one half rad three over two. Okay. Is there any questions? So, uh, I'm trying to teach this in a way where I sort of review everything because there's some students here that haven't had math in a while. They've told me in private and I'm like, oh, I'll teach you everything super fast. <laughs> and then you can watch the video and try to unpack it at home. So um, how do I figure out this pi over four angle, this pi over four point? Well, that's what we're gonna use our second triangle right here. So when I work with this second triangle, I don't need to divide by two anymore. What I really need to do is I need to divide by rad two for this triangle, right? So let me go ahead and do that to turn it into a unit thing. So here's rad two, here's one over rad two, here's one over rad two, okay? Now this is, the hypotenuse has length one. And I hope that we can see, 
again, you just imagine that we're working with um, this right triangle right here, where this is pi over four, and this is pi over four. And you can see we have exactly that reference triangle that we have on the upper left-hand corner, okay? So I hope you guys could see that the links of those two sides are gonna be one over rad two and one over rad two. Okay. So, uh, I have some good news. I think once we've figured out all those points in the first coordinate, I mean, in the first quadrant, this is the first quadrant, the upper left quadrant is called quadrant one, then we can use symmetry to fill out the rest of the points. So for example, someone unmute themselves and tell me what the corresponding point should be for two pi over three. What do you guys think that point should be and why? Anyone? Negative one half and square root of three over two. Exactly. Negative one half and square root of three over two. How did you get that point? Because the X is negative. That's right. All we did was reflected across the X axis. And when you reflect across the X axis, what are you doing? You're multiplying the x values by negative one, right? I mean, that's why that horizontal reflection works because before you plug the x into the function, you're multiplying it by negative one and that flips it to the other side of the axis. So we had discussed that transformation last class, right? Um, what about something like, uh, uh, what about something like five pi over four? What do you think the point for five pi over four should be? Well, we could take this point right here. Oops, I did not want to do that. We could take this point right over here, right? We could reflect it across the x axis. I mean, sorry, reflect it across the y axis and then reflect it across the x-axis. We're gonna reflect it across both. Anytime we reflect, you pick up a negative sign. So to me, this should be negative one over rad two and negative one over rad two like that. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. And what should this like 11 pi over six be? Just so it's perfectly obvious. For the 11 pi over six, we're reflecting this, this coordinate right here across the x-axis, right? When you reflect it across the x-axis, that's a vertical reflection. Vertical reflections affect the y values. So we're gonna multiply the y values by negative one. So this should be rad three over two and then a negative one half. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. So what I want you to do is, I'm gonna give you a couple moments and I want you to fill in the rest of this unit circle. So we labeled all of the first quadrant and one point in each of the other three quadrants. Take a moment to fill in the rest yourselves and uh, we'll move on after that. 